This video lesson is about solving the corresponding parts of congruent triangles. But before we start this lesson, we will have a review. We will identify the postulate or theorem being used to prove that the two triangles are congruent. In this example, we already have an angle and a side. The missing information is that there are vertical angles which are congruent. This time, we can identify that these two triangles are congruent because of ASA postulate. Next, we can say that the third side is congruent to the same side because of reflexive property. So, the two triangles are congruent using SSS postulate. Next, it is the same with the first example. We can prove that the vertical angles are congruent. So, these triangles are congruent because of SAS postulate. Another one. This is an example of right triangle. So, here we have the two legs congruent. So, these right triangles are congruent because of leg-leg theorem or LL theorem. Another one, all the information are complete. We already have two angles and a side. And the side is non-included side. So these triangles are congruent because of AAS theorem. How about this one? This is another example of right triangles. So we have the leg and acute angle. So this Triangles are congruent because of leg angle theorem or LA theorem. We will identify the congruent sides of these two triangles. The first one with one tick mark is AB is congruent to DE. Next, we will have the sides with two tick marks. It is BC is congruent to EF. And then the last one, is AC is congruent to DF. If we will change the congruent symbol into equal side because we are talking about the size or the measurement of the side, we will have AB is equals to DE, BC is equals to EF, AC is equals to DF. So we will use the size or the measurement of each side. Using the same set of triangles, we will now find the congruent angles. The angle with one tick mark are angle C is congruent to angle F. The angles with two tick marks are angle A is congruent to angle D. And then the last one we have angle B is congruent to angle E. If we will change the congruent symbol into equal side, we will have the measurement of angle C is equal to the measurement of angle F. The measurement of angle A is equal to the measurement of angle D. And then the last one, we have the measurement of angle B is equal to the measurement of angle E. So if we already use the equal sign for the measurement, we will add M before the angle. Let's have example number one. Using this information, let us find IN. So looking at the figure, we can say that IN is equals to MU. So IN is equals to 13.49, which is also the measurement of MU. Letter B, let's find IK. Using the illustration, we can say that IK is equals to MG. Since MG is 11, IK is also 11 because they are equal. Using the same figure, let us solve for the measurement of angle M. We can say that the measurement of angle M is equal to the measurement of angle I. Since the measurement of angle I is 60 degrees, the measurement of angle M is also 60 degrees. Letter D. How about angle U? 
we can say that the measurement of angle U is equal to the measurement of angle N. But we don't have any value for angle N, so we need to solve the measurement of angle N. So we will have the measurement of angle N is equals to the total measurement of one triangle is equals to 180 degrees and then we will subtract the sum of the two angles which are 60 degrees and 70 degrees so the measurement of angle m is equals to 180 degrees minus 60 degrees plus 70 degrees that is 130 degrees and then we can simplify that the measurement of angle n is 50 degrees if the measurement of angle n is 50 degrees meaning we can now say that the measurement of angle u is also 50 degrees let's have example number two using these two triangles we know that the triangle HOT is congruent to triangle PIE. Using what postulate? So we can use the SSS postulate. First, we need to find for X. So since HT is equals to PE, we can equate them. So we have HT, which is 5X plus 2, equals PE, which is 2X plus 5. And then we will use the left and the right side. We will collect all the terms with variables into the left side and then the constant on the right side. So we will have first 5x. It is at the correct side so we will just copy. And then we have positive 2. It should be at the right side so it will become negative 2. Don't forget to change the sign if you are transposing a term. Next, we have 2x. It is not in the correct side so we need to transpose it in the left side. So from positive, it will become negative 2x. And then the last one, we have positive 5. It is at the correct side right side so we will just copy and then we will just simplify or combine like terms first we have 5x minus 2x that is 3x and then we have negative 2 plus 5 unlike sign minus copy the sign of the bigger number so that is positive 3 in order for us to get the value of x we need, we need to divide both sides by 3. So we have 3x divided by 3, that will be x. And then 3 divided by 3, that is 1. You need to remember that the value of x here is 1. Next, we need to find ht. According to the illustration, ht is equals to 5x plus 2. And then the value of x is 1 so we will just substitute x we will make it 1 so we will have ht is equals to 5 times 1 which is the x and then copy plus 2 we will simplify we will have 5 times 1 that is 5 copy plus 2 meaning ht is equals to 7 next we need to find for the ie we can say that IE is equals to OT. So IE is equals to 7x minus 1, same as the OT, and we will use x is equals to 1. We will just substitute the value of x, we will make it 1. IE is equals to 7 times 1, that is x, copy minus 1, and then we will just simplify. 7 times 1, that is 7. And then minus 1, IE is equals to 6. Example number 3. Using this illustration, PN is the perpendicular bisector of AE. We need to find the perimeter of triangle EPA. So we need to find the perimeter of the whole illustration. Based from the illustration, we can see that AN is equals to EN. The value of AN is 6. 
and then the value of en is 2x minus 4. So we will use the left and the right side, but this time the constant will be placed at the left side so that we will not transpose many terms. So first we need to copy 6 and then 2x is at the right side. We will just also copy it. And then negative 4 needs to be transposed in the left side so that the constant will be combined. Negative 4 will become positive 4. And then we will simplify 4 plus 6, that is 10, equals 2x. In order for us to get the value of x, we need to divide both sides by 2. 10 divided by 2, that is 5. And then 2x divided by 2, that is x. So using symmetric property, we can say that x is equals to 5. Next, we need to get the value of en. En is equals to 2x minus 4. We already know that x is equals to 5. So we will just substitute. We will have 2 times 5, that is the value of x. And then copy minus 4. 2 times 5, that is 10. And then copy minus 4. En is 6. So they are just the same with an. Since en and an are both 6, we can say that the side ae is equals to 6 plus 6, so the whole side ae is 12. Next, we need to find the measurement of the other side. We can say that pa is equals to pe. PE is equals to X plus 3. And we already know that X is equals to 5. So we will just substitute. So we will just substitute the value of X. It will become 5. And then copy plus 3. PE is equals to 8. If PE is 8, PA is also 8. So in order for us to get the perimeter, of triangle EPA, we just need to add all the sides. So we have PA plus PE plus AE. So the perimeter is equals to PA, which is 8, plus PE, which is also 8, and then the AE, which is 12. So we can say that the perimeter of the triangle EPA is equals to 28. Let's have example number 4. This will be our illustration. We need to find for DA. So based on the illustration, we can say that CA is equals to DA. So the value for CA is x plus 6, while the value for DA is 2x minus 3. And then we will just use the left and the right side. We will collect all the terms with variables at the left side. First, we have x. It is at the left side, so we will just copy. And then we will have positive 6. We need to transpose it to the other side, so it will become negative 6. Next, we have 2x. We will transpose 2x. It will become negative 2x. And then we will just copy negative 3. Afterwards, we will just combine like terms. We have x minus 2x and like sign that will be negative x. And then we have negative 6 minus 3. They are both negative. We will add them and then we will copy the sign so it will become negative 9. Negative x needs to be positive, so we need to divide both sides by negative 1 to make it positive. We will have negative x divided by negative 1, that will become x. And then negative 9 divided by negative 1, that will become positive 9. So the value for x is 9. So we can now solve for the dA. So we know that dA is equals to 2x minus 3. And x is equals to 9. So we will just substitute 2 times the x which is 9, copy minus 3, 
And then we will just simplify 2 times 9, that is 18, minus 3. So dA is equals to 15. Next, example number 5. So this is a little bit tricky, but we need to solve for the value of x and y. So looking at the figure, we can say that the measurement of angle U R O is equal to the measurement of angle Y F O. Angle U R O is 110 degrees. So the measurement of angle Y F O is also 110 degrees because they are equal. Next, we can also say that the measurement of angle F O Y is equals to the measurement of angle ROU. The measurement of angle FOY is X, while the measurement of angle ROU is Y plus 10. So we can substitute X, we can make it Y plus 10. So we need to add all the angles, measurement of angle YFO, plus the measurement of the angle FOY, plus the measurement of angle FYO to make 180 degrees. We already know that the measurement of angle YFO is 110 degrees, and then the measurement of angle FOY, instead of X, we will use Y plus 10 because they are just the same, they are equal, and then plus the measurement of Angle FOY is Y equals 180 degrees because that is the sum of all the angles of a triangle. So we need to simplify. First, we need to combine the terms with Y. So Y plus Y, that is 2Y. And then for the constant, we have 110 plus 10, that is 120 equals 180 degrees. Next, we will use the left and the right side. We will start with 2y. It is at the left side, so we will just copy. And then 120 should be at the right side. So it will become negative 120 plus 180. 2y is equals to negative 120 plus 180 they have different sign, so we will minus them. So the answer is 60 and the sign of the bigger number is positive. So we have positive 60. To get the value of y, we need to divide both sides by 2. So we have 2y divided by 2, that is y, equals 60 divided by 2, that is 30 degrees. So the value for y is 30 degrees. So we can now solve for the value of x using 30 degrees as y. So we will use triangle FOY to get the value of x. So x is equals to the total of the triangle which is 180 degrees minus the sum of 110 degrees plus 30 degrees. So we will have x is equals to 180 degrees and then we will add the two angles. They will become 100 40 degrees x is equals to 180 minus 140 that is 40 degrees or another way of solving x we can use this one we have x is equals to y plus 10 we already know that y is 30 degrees so we will just substitute we will have x is equals to 30 plus 10 so still we will get x is equals to 40 degrees either way we will arrive with the same answer so that's how we solve the corresponding parts of congruent triangles